Hey guys, welcome back to Vishal's Easy German. Today, um, you'll be learning how to introduce yourself and ask questions in German. So we'll be covering the basics of how to introduce yourself when talking to someone um, formally and informally, and when you're asking questions um, in German. So first we'll have some simple greetings. So I'll say it in German and then um, I'll let you repeat it, and then I'll explain what they all mean. So first we have Hallo, Ich bin, Ich heiße, Wie geht's, und Wie geht es Ihnen? So now for pronunciation, I want you to repeat after me, and make sure you say them out loud, so you can get the pronunciation down, and memorization will come easy, easier. So you have Hallo. Ich bin, ich heiße, wie geht's, und wie geht es Ihnen? Alright, so the first one is just a simple hello, and it's pretty much the same word, except E is switched with an A. So we have hallo, and then the second one is ich bin. And that's when you're saying, um, I am, um, this is more informal, um, because it's not proper grammar. Um, so you're saying like, usually you would say that when, um, like if you wanted to say your name, so if you want to say, ich bin Vishal, so that's just saying that I am Vishal. And so for the proper way to say it is, ich heiße, which is, um, the proper, more like proper grammar, and that one's so heisa, um, the verb is heisen, and it means to be called, so you're saying I am called, and then you put your name at the end, um, saying ish heisa vishal. And for the pronunciation, just to help with this one, um, for heisa, it's a ei, um, or an ie thing, so the I gets pronounced, pronounced, and the weird looking B is just two S's. So you're just saying Heisa. So you're not pronouncing the E, just the I. So all right, the fourth one is when you're um, talking to your friend and you're asking about their day, and you would say the gates. So this is just asking how they're doing and like how their day's been going, how they're feeling. And the literal translation from English to German is how goes it? So you're basically asking how they're going or how they're doing. And that one's more informal because um, that's more like, because it's like a contraction sort of, and so that makes it more informal. And the more formal way is the gate s enen, the enen part makes it um, more formal, and as you can see, uh, there's a little difference between the v gates part. Um, so for the first one, there's no s at the end after gate. There's just an apostrophe s. So um, the apostrophe s is basically the s part, the e s part. But it's just like smushed together to make a contraction. So it's um that's also another reason why it's more informal. So um V gates is the same as V gate S. Alright, so now some ways to say hi. So I'll just repeat I'll just say them first. Hallo, guten Tag, guten Morgen, guten Abend, gute Nacht. And was ist los? So, um, so I'll just repeat them again, and I want you to repeat them out loud. And all right. so, hallo, guten Tag, guten Morgen, guten Abend, gute Nacht, und was ist los? So 
Hallo, we already covered. That's his hello. Guten Tag means good day. So the verb, the word gut means good. And you have to put an ending for um, on guten because of the conjugation. Because tag is masculine. It's a masculine noun. So that makes um, it en at the end. So it's Guten Tag, and then Tag is day. So Guten Morgen is the same thing, um, but instead of Tag, we have Morgen, which is uh, morning. So that's like if you were waking up and you saw your teacher in the morning. So you'd say Guten Morgen. The next one is Guten Abend, which is good evening. So it's the same as the first two, but Instead of Morgan and Tag, it's Abend. So this, um, the next one is not the same exactly with the conjugation, but it's the same like um, process. So Nacht is not masculine, but it is um, feminine. That's why it gets an E at the end. For, that's why Guta gets an E at the end. Um, so you have Guta Nacht. And that is good night. So, Nacht means night. And the last, and last one is the more, most inform, like more informal than the first um, few. And Vas Slost is saying, what's up? So, Vas means what, Ist is, um, is, and then Los is like, um, would be up, but like, what's up? Like, what's going on? So, the gates, the the way to respond to it is not ish bin, but it's mir gates. So you would say mir gates gut or mir gates and then however you're feeling. So as we can see, it's V gates is how goes it. And then mir gates is I, um, I'm doing um, or feeling, but mir actually lean, means me. So like the little translation is you're basically saying me goes, me goes it, not the me goes, but me and then goes and then it. Um, so that's like the little translation, but it's you, it's always like I instead of me. So for some description words, um, that you want that are useful to know when somebody asks you V gates. So this would be like how you would describe your day and how you're feeling. So we have gut, wunderbar, zolala, schlecht, nicht gut, traurig, und ausgezeichnet. All right, so I'll just repeat them again. And I want you to repeat after me. Gut, wunderbar, zolala, schlecht. Nicht gut, traurig, und ausgezeichnet. So, gut is the most common one. It's the simplest one and easiest to say. So, it's just, that's just good. Wunderbar is sort of like wonderful, but instead of an O, it's a U, and they have bar at the end instead of full. Zola la. Is sort of a funny one because it's got the la la at the end. That just means average, um, like you're doing fine, nothing good, nothing bad. Schlecht um, is bad, not doing, having a great day. So this would be not something you want to, you don't want to be schlecht. Uh, nicht gut is not good. This is sort of the same as schlecht. Um, traurig means that you're sad. Um, and then the last one is sort of like a fun one to say, not really used that much, but it's ausgezeichnet. And that means you're doing excellent, nothing better, like the best you've ever felt in, in a long time. Just having a great day that day. So how to express your feeling, how you're feeling. So somebody asks you, the gates, you wouldn't say, ich bin gut, you would say, mir gates gut. 
And the reason for that is because Mir Gates Gut is saying that I'm feeling good, but Ish Bin Gut is usually saying that you're good at something, not how you're feeling, but more like skill wise about something. So you wouldn't want to say Ish Bin Gut. Um, you would, that's sort of like kind of offending a little bit, maybe. Well, not offending, but it's not the right, proper grammar and not the right word to say. So, um, now for some farewells and ways of saying bye. So we have tschüss, which is bye. Auf Wiedersehen, which is bye. Und Dankeschön, which is thank you. So I'll just repeat them again. Tschüss, auf Wiedersehen, danke schön. So tschüss um, is sort of a weird way that it's spelt, but the pronunciation is basically like the T and the S are silent, and you're saying C-H-U, umlaut, S, S. And auf Wiedersehen. Is sort of a long one. Um, you don't usually, if you wanted to be more formal, you would say the alf part, but um, you can just usually people just say Wiedersehen um, if you're being more informal. So basically, you're saying like until, like, see you again, like until next time, sort of. And then Dankeschön is sort of uh, goodbye, like if you want to say thank you for someone helping you or um, something happens. Um, Dankeschön is more formal, and but mostly people just say Danke, which is like more um, commonly used. So now, how to ask questions in German. So, if somebody asked you in English, did you finish the work? Um, you would say, Machst du die Arbeit? And Arbeit means work. Um, max do is did you or yeah, did you and then d and then arbeit is a feminine noun so the rule as you can see um all you have to do is flip the verb and the subject to change the sentence into a question so normally you have the subject first um and if some if you are saying you did the homework you would say Du machst die Arbeit. Um, so that's saying you do, you did the work, and it's like that's present tense, like saying that even if there the homework's done or being done or the work's being done, and all you have to do is switch machst and do to get um, and then it just makes max du die Arbeit, which converts du max die Arbeit into a question sentence instead of uh, like something like a statement. So now for some question words. So we have who, what, when, where, why, and how. Those are the six main ones and the uh, ones that you should know. So we have wer, was, wann, wo, warum, and und wie. Um, just like in English, you, most of them end with W, but in German, all of them end in W, which is easy um, to remember, to know the first letter at least. So I'll just repeat them again, and I want you to um, say them out loud. So we have wer, was, wann, wo, warum, und wie. So, wer, um, usually, well, in German, usually W's are pronounced with a, sort of like a V um, sound. So you're not saying where, but you're saying there. So like sort of like a V instead of a W. So um, we have wer, was, um, wann is sort of a cognate with when, so they sort of sound like the same. And... Wo and wer, oh, wer sounds like where, but it's really who. And then wo sounds like who, but it's really where. So if you know that um, wer is wo, 
then you know that um, it sounds like who, which means that ver sounds like where, which means that vo sounds like ver. So sort of like a trick, not really. And then varum, and the last one is v. So you're just pronouncing the e for that one and like a v. So like a v e. So you just say v. So the uses, if you wanted to, ask, if you were asking someone questions, you would say "Was Max do?" So that's saying "What are you doing?" "Wer bist du?" "Wenn Max do?" "Wo Max do?" "Warum Max do?" "V Max do?" So um, you're saying um, "Who are you?" Um, "When are um, when are you doing something?" "Wo Max do?" is um, where are you, or where are you doing? Varu mox do is why are you doing? And then V mox do is how are you doing? So those are like the simple uses and like which way, like how you would use them. And as you can see, the, the verb and the subject are switched, but, um, mox and bist are not in not in first, which me um because you always put the question the question words in the beginning. So the verb always has to be in second position, but it's usually not always the second word. Um so if you want to say at what time did you do um the work, you would say um v veal or which is at what time. And that's like four words right there, which automatically makes moxed. That so um vivil or is like um its own like um sort of like its own thing. It's like by itself. So that's one, like basically like one word. And then moxed has to be the next one after um vivil or because um that's the rule. It always has to be in second position. So um vivil or mox do the arbeit. And the subject and verb are always right next to each other, no matter what is going on in the sentence. The verb and subject will always be next to each other. All right, so um, so remember that the the verb doesn't always have to be um second the second word, but it is in the second position. So here are some questions you can ask someone what um when you're meeting them or seeing someone for um, meeting up with your friends. If you want to say, what are you drinking? You would say, Bas trinks do. Um, what are you doing? Bas mox do. How old are you? Be alt bis do. Where are you going? Bo gates do. Um, trinken is the, trinks is, the verb is drink to drink. And the, it's a regular verb. And the, the stem or the full verb is trinken. Um, so that and then mox boss mox do what are you doing? The alt bis do um, alt is the um, the it means old or like age. So v alt is um, the first um, part, and then the second position is bist, which is the verb making bist in second position. Vo gates do where are you going? The irregular verb gain, um, to go, and that one is also in second position. So here's a short, quick dialogue. dialogue um, when maybe meeting someone and asking them a question. So you'll go, hello. So, all right, so I want, I'll be reading the, um, the black, and I want you to read out the red. So, um... I'll say the black and you say the red after me. Hello. D Gates. Mir Gates Zola La. Ich bin drei Zane Yara Alt. All right. So just to be clear, I'm not 13 years old. I'm currently 15. And I did act accidentally add an extra LA, so it's only two, not three. So basically, all right, so I'll just, um, 
review what each of the words means. Hello is hel hello. V Gates, I'm asking, how are you doing? And then you respond, I'm doing good. Undo means and you. So basically you're asking me V Gates, but more in a, in a more concise way and not as long. And I'm saying that I'm doing average. And then you ask, how old are you? And I say that I'm 13 years old. And Yara means years. So I'm saying I am 13 years old. And then you say, thank you, and then bye. So here are some things to remember from this episode. Verbs will always be in second position. To create a question, just switch the subject and the verb. And the verb will always be, the subject will al always be next to the verb, and the verb will always be next to the subject. And the six question words are usually in the beginning of the sentence, um, which moves the verb to the second position. And the only reason, the only place where verbs are not in second position is when you're, um, there's no question word, and, um, um, like if you want to say Max do the arbeit, like are you doing the work? Are you yeah, are you doing the work? You would so ma um the verb is in first position and that's only when there's no um um like question word in the beginning. So that's the only way that verb will not be in second position. So it's either first or second, but usually it's in second. Thanks for watching. Make sure you um, try and do the extra work that I leave in the description. Um, when you, if you do it, make sure you leave it um, your answers in the comments or um, send them to me somehow. And um, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Um, remember to, and remember to keep learning German.